Will Ravens give Geno Stone a chance to prove that he's a capable safety in this league? When J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards return next year, will the Ravens still be a pass-heavy team or will they be more balanced with the run game? Can Ravens keep up these heroic comeback victories? These and many, many more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from Subs. Yeah. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons and special shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. You can send it directly on Patreon. I love y'all, Team Keep It Clean. I appreciate y'all. I was going to wait till after the game to do these questions, but I was like, you know what? Let's run it. Team Keep It Clean. Let's do it. First question came from my boy, Nick Brick, and appreciate you being a patron, my guy. He said, Engraven, just want to say thanks for carrying us through this crazy season. Thank y'all for carrying me. Um, I feel like the sixth man, and y'all are all the starters. So I appreciate y'all, team. Keep it clean. And yeah, this has been a crazy season, and it's probably going to get even more wild. Anyway, he said, do you think the Ravens will ever give Geno Stone a shot? Uh, he got those two picks in preseason. It looked like he had the best ball skills. No hate towards Brandon, but I feel like Geno Stone hasn't even gotten a chance. He might just be a gamer and might be the ball hawk we've been looking for a year for years now. Um, man, I, if they didn't give it to him by now, then no. Uh, I don't think that I, Brandon Stevens' value to them is so much higher and so much more than Geno Stone's is. And the reason I say that is because you look. They drafted Geno Stone, what, two years ago? But the same year they drafted him, they cut him. He went to the Texans, and then they were like, oh, okay, you're available again. You know what? Well, come on back. So he came back, and he made the roster. Um, but I just – and, and you, you've even seen it when Deshaun Elliott went down before. When Deshaun Elliott went down and the Chiefs came, well, they did have, actually have Geno Stone out there. But uh, when Deshaun Elliott's gone down, they went to Brandon Stevens a lot more than they went to Geno Stone. Um, so they obviously, Brandon Stevens is their guy that they're really grooming. It seems that they're grooming for that position. And, and we'll, uh, a lot more of the story will be told uh, in the game against the Miami Dolphins. So uh, as far as Geno Stone, yeah, I don't, I don't think he'll really get a, a significant shot just because he's not valued by the team. <laughs> Speaking of the safety play, next question came from my boy, Droid209. He said, Engraver, man, I hope the family is doing good and everyone's staying healthy in these times. Appreciate that, man. My question is, why can't we sign Earl Thomas? Why did the fallout get bad, and will we ever get him back? No, no, and no. He is never coming back to the Ravens. And, I mean, I don't know if he'll ever even play again because I was for sure. I was like, man, ain't no way that the last thing he played for about to be the Ravens. No, nah, somebody's going to sign Earl Thomas for sure. He's probably going to end up going back to the Cowboys. Then I, I remember back two years ago, when Earl Thomas got cut, and then the Cowboys, they end up cutting their starting free safety from the previous year, which was Ha Ha Clinton Dix. And when they cut him, I was like, oh, uh oh, okay, I see where this is going. Nothing. Nothing. So that, I don't, I don't want to say that might be it for Earl Thomas, but it might actually be it for Earl Thomas. Um, and he said, thanks for answering in advance. Hashtag big trust. So why can't we sign Earl Thomas? Well, that's because they signed Earl Thomas already and they cut him. Like I, like I always say, I think it's because they regretted their decision. I think they really regretted giving him all that money. And then it just didn't work out, of course, all the fights and all that. And then they're still going through the grievance right now with Earl Thomas. That grievance has not been resolved yet. So we're still waiting to see if the Ravens are going to end up getting that 10 mil or Earl Thomas is going to end up keeping that 10 mil. I think Earl Thomas is going to end up keeping it because the Ravens just, I, I know they were just looking for a reason to cut him. I know they were. And when he put out that practice video, they, I told you, they were like, oh, Conduct detrimental to the team. Yes, we can cut him and try to recoup some of our money back that we made a little mistake on giving him. Because I remember when they first signed him, that the, all the money that they had given him, it had kind of took the hype away front, uh, for me a little bit. Because I, I, I was cool that they signed Mark Ingram and, and Earl Thomas, and then they had them at, at the presser together. I was cool with it, whatever. But then when, they, when I saw it, was like a, a what was it, a four year deal for fifty five mil with like thirty three mil guarantee, I was like, what? This, this guy just coming off of two broken legs. I'm not saying that he can't be healthy now, but and, and they always say when a bone, when a bone breaks, it, it grows back stronger, but still it's like, whoa, that's a lot. 
And I think the Ravens realized that after a little while, too. So Earl Thomas is never coming back to the Ravens. Ravens are never going back to Earl Thomas. The only time these two will ever even meet again, talk again, speak again, communicate again will be when this grievance gets filed. Next question came from my boy Z. He said, I get, I get really tired of people like Stephen A talking about the Buffalo playoff loss like Lamar didn't leave with a concussion. Lamar came back in the Titans win and he has come back in every game this season except since he... <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, I was confident that with the win against all back in the fourth, we would have beat Buffalo last year. When we win the Super Bowl, where do you think they'll move the goalposts to next? Appreciate what you do and keep the videos coming. I hey, appreciate that, man. Um, I, this is something that we, we talked about this extensively on here. Whatever he does, it's, not, it's never going to be good enough. And yeah, I know a lot. That's a lot of people's talking point. What a lot of people like to do if. If the right here and the right now is not fitting their narrative, then they'll reach way back and be like, ah, ah, ah get, come here. Ah, come on, you're trying to get away from me, wrong narrative. Come here. Buffalo playoff loss. Look at that. Three points. Lamar Jackson, three points. See, he sucks, right? He's terrible. He's not a top five quarterback. He's not an elite quarterback. He's no good. Lost to Buffalo in the playoffs and only put up three points. Wow, he's, what, a, what, a, what a bad guy. They, they always reach for that in their back pocket because right now Lamar has been showing like he's been showing his value since he started. But his value keeps increasing and he just keeps on showing why he's worth a blank check for these Ravens. With what the what the Ravens have accomplished with Lamar Jackson, they don't do that with most other quarterbacks. They don't. They really don't. Because this guy has has, has gotten Offensive lineman overrated. This guy ha has just because he's obviously, and especially this year. Last last year, I thought last year was rough with the offensive line. Oh boy, this year said last year. <laughs> Hold our beer, and this year has been just so bad with the offensive line. It has been like, oh my goodness, but they keep winning. They keep making plays. They 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 just keep on going, and I've just been like, wow. So um, the, the goalposts will always be moving. If, if Lamar Jackson, actually when Lamar Jackson wins the Super Bowl, they're going to say, why you don't win two? If he wins two, they're going to be like, why you don't win three? If he wins three, they're going to go, why you don't win four? Oh, uh, you know what? The other team, they just, they, their hearts weren't in it in that game. That's the only reason that Lamar Jackson knows Ravens won, because the other team, they had an off day. They had an off game. It's always going to be something. Next question came from the solution for kicks. He said, "Engraven, shout out from San Antonio, but I'm be more born and raised." Okay, you done, that's a that's a nice little movie you done made. He said, "Your content is required daily content for me. Uh, keep putting out great content. Pre pre appreciate it, man. Thank you." He said, "Once J.K. Gus and Justice return next season, will the Ravens revert back to their ground and pound offense, or do they realize they now have a feared aerial attack and go after teams in all fa facets on offense?" I believe this is the building a bully EDC and Harbaugh discussed, but it's been delayed by a year due to the insane amount of injuries. That's a really good question. How will the Ravens uh, bounce back next year? Well, how will they run their offense next year uh, when they get the guys back? Great question. And we won't know till we see it, but I think um, they, will, they will run a lot more than they do now. And they'll run a lot more successfully than they do now because they haven't like it's, it's so weird. Like, when you see Ravens are ranked, like, I forgot what their rank is in rushing. I think it's like three. It's, it's something. I forgot what it is. But then when you look at the games, it's like, how is that the number three rank running off? I, me, personally, I just don't be seeing it. But, and I know Lamar is a big part of that because he be getting a bunch of rushing yards. Uh, and then Devontae, he chip in here and then, Le Le Le'Veon Bell and whatnot. But just consistently, it's like, nah, I, I don't see a top-ranked rushing team right now. Um, but... When J.K. and Gus and Justin, when they come back, then that'll give that'll up the quality of the running back so much, and that'll up the uh, the chemistry of the running backs with Lamar Jackson so much. Then they can add the RPO back to their offense because it seems like they're taking it out a lot. They hardly ever use it. Um, so it's it's gonna be nice to see. Uh, now, as far as the passing game, I really do think that the passing game th this year, I don't think it was supposed to be on the level that it's at right now. I really don't. I think it was supposed to make a jump, it was, and it was expected to make a jump, and it would have made a jump, but I do not think they intended it to jump this high. I ain't mad at it. I mean, I'm mad at the situation that guys got hurt, um, and that's that's what forced them to, but I, I don't think it was supposed to be like this. Uh, but when, when you have injuries to your top three running backs, like, 
okay, well, I, we got to really pass the ball now. Um, so hopefully it's just just a, a, a balanced attack next year. Uh, an, an attack that both uh, the pass game can complement the run game and vice versa. Uh, that's all we want. And, and then, like, because you just see how successful the passing game has been. We want the running game to accompany it too, but it, everything starts first with the offensive line. So, like you mentioned, EDC talked about um, building the bully. He said that this may – is this the building the bully that they, they talked about before? Well, you, you got to get that offensive line right first, and then you can really uh, build the bully because once the offensive line gets right, once the offensive line is strong, then everything else gets that much stronger like that. Next question came from my guy, Dominic. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you're doing well. My question is to you, what is your biggest surprise from the season so far? Um, biggest surprise from the season so far has been the, the the huge jump in the passing game and how the Ravens are actually a better passing team than running team. That's been <laughs> my biggest one. Um, and, and and also my probably a bigger surprise than that has been just how many injuries this team has sustained, uh, but how they continue to, to maintain and have success. Uh, his next question was, what has been your biggest disappointment? Oh, probably the offensive line. Um, a lot has to do with injuries, uh, and a lot just has to do with just poor play. Um, so I would say the offensive line, um, the tackle position. And I know this, it wasn't their intended offensive line, so got to keep that in mind. Um, but besides that, because, uh, I mean, I feel like it's like sort of unfair to say it's the offensive line because, again, there's been injury after injury after injury after injury after injury. Um, so... Biggest of disappointment besides that, uh, probably the pass rush. Um, yeah, probably the, the pass rush because I expected, all right, we got Justin Houston, um, Adafi away. He started, he, come, he came on strong in the beginning, but he sort of slowed up over the past couple of weeks. You ain't heard from him as much. Um, Calais Campbell, another year in the system. Matt Abike, another. So it probably be defensive line and pass rush. That'd be my biggest disappointment. And he has also said, and what is one thing that you expect the team to get better at moving forward? Oh, um, that's a really good question right there. Uh, I will say the passing game. The reason I will say the passing game is because even though the passing game has been taking a lot of strides forward, uh, they haven't been at their full at full health. Because early on in the season, it's Hollywood and Sammy Watkins, Rashad Bateman's out. Now it's been Hollywood and Rashad Bateman. Sammy Watkins has been out. But now Sammy Watkins makes his return in Miami. Well, like what better place to come back than your crib? Because you from Florida. But so that's what I would say. I would say the passing game. This, these were some really good questions. Next question came from my boy Terrell B. Shout out to you and your pops, man. I appreciate the both of y'all. He said, good morning, engraving. Hope all is well with you and the fam. Of course, I'm feeling like both sides of the interior is a little weak. And the offense and defenses have exposed that. When will the Ravens decide to address this issue so that we can compete and get back to what we do? Of course, it isn't easy, but, I also, but although I said develop our own previously in another question, but we can't develop our own with a lot of our own being on the sideline with injuries. So I would like Lamar to have more help in blocking schemes and help in situations. My apologies for the long post, but I needed to get this one out. <laughs> it's all good, man. All right, he said, and, and P.S., my pops Alonzo said, what up? Tell pops I said, what up? And we support all your content. Thank you, man. Um, see, th this is tough. This is really tough because they actually did, as far as the offense, the interior of the offense, they did upgrade it. They moved Bradley Bozeman back to center. He's been doing a really good job. Um, and, and they drafted uh, Ben Cleveland. They drafted him. But injuries happen. And, and again, Tyree Phillips. He was supposed to be the starting left guard. So they, they had options at left guard, and then they signed Kevin Zeitler. He's been doing all right. Um, but so, so they on the offensive side, they, they upgraded the interior. They, they, they tried. So I can't be mad at them for that. Now, the, the tackle spots, that's, that's been a little different. But as far as defensive interior, Justin Matabike. But he hasn't. He hasn't had that takeoff like a lot of us expected him to. He has had little flashes here and there, but he hasn't really made that big jump uh, like a lot of us thought he would. Uh, it's still a lot of season left. And, hey, who knows? This Miami game could be Justin Matabike coming out party, whether it's against Jacoby Brissett, whether it's against Tua, whoever it may be. So I just feel like this, 
they they've tried, but I think next season they definitely try a, a lot more because I think Brandon Williams is gone. I think Calais Campbell is gone. Uh, Justin, well, Justin Houston not in interior defensive lineman. Pernell McPhee, I think he'll be going. So I, I think they are going to really revamp this entire defensive line. And I think you'll get what you wish for. Next question came from my boy Paul. He said, hey, Engraving, hope all is well with you and the fam. It's been a stressful few weeks for me with my college classes, my family. I would all like to say thank you uh, to you for making it all go smoother. It's always nerve-wracking going into Sunday when the Ravens are playing, and I'm hoping we'll win and we'll have a good game, but I'm also hoping that Lamar doesn't get injured behind this suspect offensive line. This week, it turned out all right, although we did lose to Sean Elliott for the season. What a bummer. Uh, and it shouldn't have been this close against this Vikings team, but we'll hopefully manage with Brandon Stevens stepping up. He's looked pretty good so far, and at the end of the day, a win is a win. Yes, that's true. A win is a win, even though in that win, we did have a big loss uh, with that Deshaun Elliott being gone now. Um, but with Brandon Stevens, yeah, he um, it's his time now. So we really going to see why the Ravens love him so much. We're really going to see why the Ravens had played him and had him out there on the field. So even before the Deshaun Elliott injury, uh, we're going to see just why the Ravens really, really love this dude. Um, and you talked about Lamar Jackson every week. We're going to the game hoping that Lamar doesn't get hurt behind the offensive line because it's, it's scary. It's scary. And I know it's something that's been in the back of a lot of people's minds like, man, Lamar taking a lot of hits back there because offensive line ain't protecting because this dude, he'll have defenders draped all over him. And he'll, he'll, to make plays, this dude got a fight. He really got a fight, man. Uh, so it's, it's, it's something that, again, offensive line has got to be a big priority this offseason because you, you're limited on what you can do now. Uh, he said, anyway, I read the Bleacher Report power rankings for this week, which has the Ravens listed at number five. And it says something interesting, which I was curious to hear your thoughts on. It says the Ravens appear to enjoy cutting things close this year. <laughs> hey, they not lying so far. It goes on to explain that this game was a uh, micro, uh, microcosm, I don't even know that word, uh, of the Ravens as a team since they had a stellar performance by Lamar, Hollywood, and company, but had many issues as well, such as the two interceptions thrown by Lamar, one of which was because of a great play by the Vikings defender, yeah, Anthony Barr, shout out to him, and struggled at times in pass coverage, although tackling was thankfully better. It certainly was. Uh, but as a result, they started slow, fell behind 14 points, uh, going into the second half and miraculously came back and won in overtime thanks to a kick by Justin Tucker. To me, it seems like almost every game has gone this way, except for the Chargers game and the Broncos game, too. Don't forget that one. Uh, so do you expect this trend to continue down the stretch uh, when we will face some of our toughest opponents in back-to-back -back weeks? And is it sustainable to be con constantly winning games like this? Anyway, I appreciate your daily videos. Keep up the good work and like the Sean Elliott is for the year. I'm out. Oh, that's sad. Now, listen to the, the last question that you asked, because you answered it already. You said, is it sustainable to, constantly, to be constantly winning games like this? You already answered it. Winning games. That's it. Winning game. Like you said in the first paragraph, a win is a win. Whether the Ravens win a game in a blowout fashion, or if the Ravens win a game by just that, that much. They won. They won. If the Ravens got into the playoffs and they blowing teams out by 34 points, or if they squeaked by a team and only won by two, that would still be a playoff win. If Ravens got to the Super Bowl and, boy, they, they put up 50 on somebody and the other team only scored 10. 40-point difference. Ooh, that's a beautiful win. Big win in the Super Bowl. Or if the Ravens only won by one point, guess what? Guess what happens at the end of the game? The Ravens are still... Super Bowl champions. So winning is winning no matter if, if you win big, if you win small, if you're up all game, if you got to come back like the Ravens have been doing, a win is a win. Now, as far as what we should expect, I don't even know. We don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows. Because these Ravens, they do the unexpected. It's like when, when you expect, all right, man, they, they should blow this team out. Yeah, they should, they, should, they should definitely take care of business. It ends up being a close game. <laughs> So, I, and the Broncos game, I was like, man, these Broncos, yeah, they 3-0, and and, and they, they beat some, some pretty bad teams, but still, that defense is something serious. Now, I expected the Ravens to win, but I thought it was going to be a close one. Nope, Ravens said, no, oh, we got this. Chargers game, I expected the Ravens to lose that game. Ravens said, oh, no, no, we got this. Week one against the Raiders, I expected, I expected the Ravens to, to blow them out. Week one, Ravens, oh, yeah, we know they take care of business. Nope. 
Lost in overtime. Defense was in shambles the whole game. Chiefs game, I expected them to lose because all these injuries and whatnot, and it's the Chiefs. This is your kryptonite, like Lamar said last year. They end up getting a win. So these guys are, are just, they, they are so unpredictable, but that's what makes watching them so stressful, but so fun. But so stressful, but really fun. Um, so we just got to watch and see and just hope, again, whether it's by big margins or even by small margins, we just got to hope that they keep winning. Last question came from my boy uh, Howard S. He said, what's happening, Gray? And appreciate the shout-out on my rant to your latest video. I got to clarify that the comment I made regarding the up-tempo offense, I was writing so fast at the time that I made a mistake and didn't write the word don't in that comment. Trust me, what I meant to write was I hate the fact that they don't run more up-tempo, fast-paced offense in crucial situations of the game. Okay, all right, now that, now that makes sense. All right, I got you. He said, just wanted to clear that up. I know our next game is Thursday night, so I'm sure I'll be writing my opinions in the comment section of your videos and sending more observations, takes to the email. All right, so yeah, that, that, that makes more sense now. Now, now I got you. So I, I agree that that up-tempo offense, that, that could just work wonders for this Ravens team. That's not something you can run 24-7, <laughs> but to just incorporate it a little bit more, it would do a lot. And he also said, I'm ready for our Ravens to handle business down in South Beach on Thursday night. It's a short week, and I hope Harbaugh has the guys ready to go. But I'm about to drop some little Ravens history nuggets that I don't believe get mentioned or talked about or wrote about from Ravens beat writers or reporters. Harbaugh should have a special place in his heart for the Dolphins. Why? Because in 2007, oh yeah, that was the great Camarillo game. He said, because in 2007, the Ravens was having a bad season, but the Dolphins were even worse. Because when the two teams met that season, the Dolphins were winless, about to be an 0-16 team. But they beat all Ravens for their only win that year and went 1-15. I remember that game. It was Greg Camarillo in overtime. He broke free. Boom. Dolphins win. And then, well, I'm going to let you take it because I know I see where you're going with this. He said, I believe that game was the straw that broke the camel's back that led to Coach Billick getting fired. The owner, Steve B., had just gave Billick a four-year contract extension coming off that 13-3 2006 season. Just, did, just some little tidbits for our new, newer Ravens fans who only know the Ravens since Harbaugh's been coach. Hashtag Ravens Nation. Now, um, see, that's something I didn't know. And I, I had been watching Ravens back then, too, but um, I, I did not know that, uh, but, uh, not Bishotti, that um, Billick, I did not know he was fresh off a four-year contract extension. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, after that Steve McNair year. I had no clue about that. So that makes the firing and the timing and just how everything worked itself out uh, with John Harbaugh that much uh, crazier. I always talk about how timing is everything, and that right there, it shows it again. Shout out to Graven.